Hello everybody and welcome back to RPG Radio. My name is Winback and on today we're on part 3 of our hardcore adventure with our warlord and things are shaping up pretty good. But we're on Elite today all the way up on the next level of difficulty. Not level 75 like I was hoping we would be, but since it's hardcore, since it's basically a complete start over, it's not going to be as fast as I want it to be, unfortunately. No potions of clarity unlocked, no low car set, no nothing. So we're just doing it by the books the old-fashioned way. That being said, the build has matured a little bit. Things have got a bit more um, pointed in what we can do. We have quite a few points into Vire's Might. Blade Arc and Blitz all being our main three damage dealing abilities so those three things combined are helping us keep the clear nice and quick. This is a YouTube video though so feel free to like, comment, and subscribe your heart out. Do the thumbs, click the bells, do whatever you want or don't. It's all part of the fun. Now, with this build being hardcore, I do take my time with a lot of the bosses. Just have to gauge everything that's going on with this stuff, because I don't want to get trapped in a stupid situation and die to some random one-shot bullshit from a character I wasn't expecting to do lots and lots of damage. As it turns out, there are tons of those in this game, and they sneak up on you really quick when you're not paying attention to them. So Zarya there is one of those bosses and I have made sure to give her a wide berth while still dumping all the damage on her face with our dashes, our mobility. So the, uh, the build has changed a little bit. We got rid of some of the components that were previously on here. There's no more brutal shield slam. There's no more shield slam period. We switch that up for a, uh, it's not Blade Barrier, and maybe it is Blade Barrier, maybe there's just two skills called Blade Barrier. Anyway, there's a component that gives us a, a bunch of uh, Pierce Resist and um, I think it's Physical Retaliation when we activate it, but that's in our third slot now, that's a defensive option. Getting some more points into Ascension as well, which is increasing our retaliation damage when we get hit. And we also have uh, Counter-Strike. We've got Divine Mandate maxed out in terms of points too. Uh, and then, what else is there? Uh, Clarity of Purpose, that's still happening because Haven gives us shield block, shield uh, block chance, shield block damage, shield block cooldown. Uh, and it gives us uh, overall health. So we're getting a percentage health increase from Clarity of Purpose with Haven. And then we've got a uh, fire weapons on from the Enchanted Flint component. That's in our main hand weapon. And that is where we're getting some of our base tier fire damage because we do need that to help out Vire's Might. Vire's Might is dealing all of the fire damage in this build. And it is also dealing some internal trauma damage too. Uh, Blade Arc is dealing bleeding and internal trauma damage with maybe some physical? If there is, it's not a lot. Um, and then lastly, Blitz coming in to round things out. Also doing physical, internal trauma, and some bleeding damage. Blitz being just all sorts of useful. We have... Uh, monster and Frequent as well on this kit that are buffing all of those abilities. Actually, no. We don't have a Monster and Frequent for Fire's Might. We've got uh, Kalis Ka's Shield for Blade Arc. That's giving it a lot more damage, both physical and bleeding. And then for Blitz, we are using... Uh, what is that monster's name? I think it's Gloom Weaver. Gloom Weaver's Medallion, which is giving crit damage and cooldown reduction to Blitz uh, in the same way that the Warden's Shield does. So we can keep the Kaliska Shield and use that amulet to get the best stats possible for uh, Blitz and Blade Arc at the same time. 
That being said, I'm still trying to find a, an empowered pair of hulking leg guards because those are incredibly useful in this build right now, but I'm only sitting on the regulars. And then uh, getting a new weapon at any point would be super cool because I do not think what we are working with right now is the best of all worlds. The weapon that we're holding on to right now is the Sandclaw Slicer. So that is an Act 7 monster in Frequent that is uh, doing a bit of change to Blade Arc and Presence of Virtue. Uh, so it's adding physical damage to Blade Arc and it's adding uh, lifesteal to Blade Arc as well. And then Presence of Virtue gets attack speed and physical damage on top of that. So it's got the right effects that we want. It's changing good stuff in our build, but the level of the item itself is pretty low and really needs something new in the meantime. Um, other than that, we have also got Corvin Cask of uh, Drixgaze. That sounds right. Uh, it's one of the helmets. Again, it's an Axe 7 helmet. A lot of the Axe 7 stuff is really good because our Oath Keeper and our soldier work very uh, in tandem with that stuff. Uh, but the Corvin Cask is also adding lifesteal to Blade Arc. It's adding internal trauma and vitality decay to Blade Arc as well. So really well-rounded helmet. The helmet, the, the main hand weapon, uh, and the shield all work very well in conjunction with Presence of Virtue and Blade Arc. So... It's a Vyre's Might Focus build, but you wouldn't be able to tell that from looking at the gear. Um, other than that, though, I've also managed to pick up uh, Ikrix Scale. Uh, Ikrix is a monster that you find in the Mountain Deeps right after, or right before you get to Homestead. And Ikrix it gives you a scale that uh, gives him good stats to Overguard. Uh, we use Overguard as a defensive button, so it's given us 12% health back to that button, which is fantastic. And then it's also buffing our Lightning Retaliation like crazy as well. Uh, it's also adding two seconds onto Resilience, which is uh, not something that we have a whole lot of points in right now. But as far as Oathkeeper skills go, that is definitely one of the better ones. Uh, basically, Resilience, when you drop below 66% health, you get a bunch of defensive ability, healing effects are increased, and you get physical resistance up to, I think it's like 10%-ish. It's, it's a big chunk of physical resistance. Um, I think it also adds maximum to all resistances at that. So it's a really good skill. Super worth it. And if we can get some random ass points and buff some stuff on that, I'd say we're working it. Uh, as far as boots go, I um, I got some during this video, actually. I need to put the button on. But we got the Stone Rock Groundbreakers, the empowered version. And those are adding points to Vire's Might. But they also come with the Ground Stomp ability. Uh, I need to put that on the hotbar still because that aoe ability is fantastic it's doing physical internal trauma and slowing targets that get hit in a big ass aoe around you so um, this is another boss though karaz uh, and uh, thalnosh the unraveler those well i guess karaz himself isn't too big a deal but the unraveler once he transforms can wipe you out pretty quickly if you don't dodge the chaos puddles. I've said this in tons of videos before. Every time I run into this boss, I mention it. But since he is, uh, I mean, since he can melt you like that, you got to watch out for when he raises his arms up and gets all that chaos damage on the floor. That stuff hurts. So keep moving. Keep your stuff going. It's not really a problem with this build because a lot of it is based on mobility and we can just get in and out of everywhere whenever we want to. But um, yeah, just keep an eye open when you're playing against this monster, especially if you're in hardcore because he will wipe you off the face of the earth without you noticing it unless you're paying attention for it. Uh, there are some other bosses that have almost tripped me up in this playthrough too, but they're not big bosses like this one. 
Uh, one of them is... It's a, it's a wasp boss. I can't remember what the hell the name is. But there's a boss in Act 2 hiding in a, a hornet's nest down in a cave. And I think it does... I want to say it does a lot of piercing and bleeding damage. But... Uh, yeah, it snuck up on me real quick. I think we dropped down to like 20% before I ran screaming out of the cave, never to return. So, if you're ever playing a hardcore character, I highly recommend staying away from those uh, beehives until you have everything capped out. Maybe I'll find out who that is and actually put the information in. But still, if it's a beehive, run for, run for your dear life now as far as everything else going on with this build the um the gear i guess there's a little bit more gear to go over uh we've got endurance as our relic uh endurance is going to add one to everything in Oathkeeper. it's giving physical and fire damage as well as a bit of physical resistance so it's pretty cool the completion bonus that i have on it right now isn't great uh it's just plus one to celestial presence so it's like you know whatever um but it also gives you some physical and fire damage at a 30 percent chance when hit it's only on a one second uh cooldown as well so when we get hit that passive can activate pretty often uh this build in and of itself has a lot of defensive options in terms of retaliation and the devotions so i'll take you through those real quick the devotions are probably some of my favorite things about this build, if we're being honest. Um, I only took one of the outer tier constellations, and that is going to be the Obelisk of Menhir. That one is a, a yellow and a blue. So yellow is order, blue is primordial. That is, um, that's the only one I was building towards on the outer ring. Basically, this one's giving you defensive ability, it's giving you armor, uh, there is some physical retaliation in there. You get block chance uh, increased to or increases to the amount of damage you can block. All really, really good defensive stuff. And then uh, stone form is uh, you have a, a small percent chance to activate this on blocking, but you get damage absorption, reduction in bleeding and poison and then a big buff to all retaliation damage. Uh, it's, it's just a super good devotion to have when you've got a shield on, so uh, it probably goes without saying though that we've also taken Shield Maiden, which is just underneath the obelisk, and Shield Maiden gonna give us internal trauma and physical damage retaliation. It's also upping your shield block chance and your defensive ability. Um, yeah, just dumping tons and tons and tons of utility into that shield while also reducing your stun duration by 25 percent so if you are short on that um resistance you can always pick up shield maiden assuming that you have a shield because it is required for the uh the devotion uh, there's also Solemn Watcher. Solemn Watcher isn't doing anything crazy, but again, it is defensive ability. You're getting uh, physique. You're also getting armor, but this is giving a big chunk to pierce resistance and cold resistance as well. So that devotion is pretty underwhelming to look at, but I promise you those stats are good. Uh, there's also Scarab. Scarab is an early on constellation, but... There's big bleeding resistance in there. You get reduced stun duration, adding more to the shield damage blocked. Uh, there's some acid retaliation in there too, but you know, that's like, it's not a big deal. Um, I don't, no, uh, none of our gear should have that by the end of things, but you know, it, it's just a gimme. Take what you can get. Uh, there is also tortoise. That's how we really kick things off. Tortoise has defensive ability, it has health, uh, it's reducing physique requirements for shields, not that we need it because we're mostly dumping into physique anyway. Uh, it's got physical resistance to 4% as well as percentage health increase, which is fantastic. Tortoise is really a phenomenal devotion for anybody using a shield 
are playing a more defensive oriented build. Um, the uh, turtle shell is uh, the skill that comes with it. Once you hit 50% health, if you get knocked down that far, you get a very big uh, shield for damage absorption, and that's about it. Um, but it is incredibly good. Definitely saved my butt quite a few times. We're also using Targo the Builder and then Anvil. Uh, Targo is, or Targo the Builder, I guess, is, um, he's also full of defensive stats, but there is a bit of retaliation in there as well. Targo gives you 150 physical damage retaliation while increasing your armor, giving you Aether and Chaos resistance, and increasing the shield, or increasing the damage that your shield can block. It's awesome. Uh, and then shield wall, you have a 25% chance when you, that's probably different for different abilities, but I put it on blade arc. So it's a 25% chance on attack there. And that's gonna increase armor by 40%, increase shield damage blocked by 210%, and then give us 525 physical damage retaliation. The, uh, the devotion is extremely good for shields. That's just, I, awesome um anvil is you can probably see anvil working uh over time with this build in the video you'll see the little spinning hammers that is all coming from uh anvil anvil's ability is targo's hammer and that's a 33 percent chance on block it's got a 0.1 second skill recharge so basically if you have a short cooldown on your shield on the amount of times that you can block you can get a lot of hammers out very very quickly and these just continue to spin around you huh it doesn't say how long they last but they last quite a while um yeah and they go through enemies uh they deal a part of your retaliation damage as their attack while also dealing physical damage and buffing internal trauma damage. There's also a 50% uh, chance to stun the target for a second, so that's pretty dope. Um, otherwise though, Anvil is giving armor. Uh, it also gives internal trauma damage, which is pretty decent. And there is a small buff to constitution, which you don't see a lot. Um, after that though, the, uh, the last two devotions that we've got, the big one, is going to be Autumn Boar. Uh, now, Boar is is towards the end. It doesn't really give a whole lot of points. I was trying to get over to Oleron, but I saw Boar and kind of like changed my mind at the last minute. Uh, Boar is buffing retaliation, giving you physique and cunning. You're getting pierce resistance, you're getting flat physique, you're getting physical resistance and defensive ability. Uh, you're getting percentage increases to physique as well as oh where is there it is 150 physical damage retaliation this build is really leaning heavy into the physical retaliation so things are working out pretty decent in that area and then trample which is the coolest part of the boar in my opinion is another 33 percent chance to block or to activate on block and then when this happens you basically launch out big old rocks um, it's happened a number of times in the video, but those shoot out in a line, they deal, uh, kind of the same that Targo's hammer does, uh, but they're dealing weapon damage, they're dealing part of your retaliation damage, and they deal internal trauma, as well as have a, uh, well, it's a 100% chance to knock down a target for 0.8 to one and a half seconds. So, smaller enemies... You know, non-boss enemies are absolutely going to be crippled by that devotion. Uh, and honestly, this build is extremely good at taking out groups of enemies. Bosses are a little bit more difficult because we don't have a huge amount of damage. But clumps of enemies just fall over. It's crazy how good it is and how... I don't know. I, I just like being hit and dealing a bunch of damage back to the enemies, so that's always fun for me to see. Uh, and then lastly, we have Ulzad, Herald of Korvac. 
This isn't a completed devotion. We just put our last four points into his toes, his little toesies, and then his beard. His beard is going to give us uh, cold resistance, poison, and acid resistance, as well as some defensive ability. Uh, and then after that, we're going out to the hilt of his sword for a flat physical damage, as well as buffed physical and internal trauma damage. And then we're binding Blitz to his uh, his devotion, or his ability, devotion ability. So it's a 20% chance with Blitz to deal. Uh, it's not even to deal. Uh, this is, um, it's basically a passive. It's going to go for 10 seconds. It's got a 22 second cooldown, which is a little bit of a bummer. But for 10 seconds, you're getting flat physical damage. You're buffing your physical and pierce as well as your internal trauma damage, getting a whole bunch of armor, flat armor, and you are getting physical damage retaliation. So those are literally all stats that we need with the exception of the pierce damage, and it is completely worth it for a 20% chance to activate on an AoE ability. That is bar none, totally worth four points and not completing the devotion. Uh, obviously, I had to take out my first two crossroads uh, devotion points to get there, but this is a pretty precarious devotion cycle and all of this stuff. Oh, I forgot to mention Bull. Bull being one of the earliest devotions that you can get while still being extremely, extremely useful. Um, yeah, I mentioned in the last video, I'm sure, but... Bull gives movement speed, internal trauma damage, physique and armor, all good stuff there. And then Bull Rush, the attack itself, we bind that to Vire's Might, and it's the uh, the big red AoE circle that you see happen around the character ever so often. It happens quite a bit, but that's doing weapon damage, physical damage, and internal trauma damage, and it's only got a 0.4 second cooldown. So, every time that... Uh, Vire's Might and the little carpet of fire that we get from Volcanic Stride, every time those hit something, we're basically getting an activation of Bull Rush, which makes standing in the middle of clumped up enemies deal extra damage. It's awesome. One of the uh, most fun synergies between a devotion and ability I've come across in the game, and I really, really, really love it. It'd probably be a really, really good for... I have Reckoning, too. If you're playing an Oathkeeper and you want to go spin, uh, I would highly recommend Bull there as well. Because that will activate so often and do so much more damage while you're a spinning nightmare of Tasmanian Devil incarnate. Things will be good. Uh, yeah, but that's, that's kind of it for all the devotions. Really, this build is still... Uh, it's definitely in the elite stages. It's not ready for ultimate yet. I'm going to try and get it up there as quick as I can, but the schedule might be a little bit weird coming up soon because we're going back into the workforce, the 9 to 5, and my time for doing all of this stuff is going to drastically drop off. So I'm going to try to keep up to the schedule. I definitely should be able to, but I'll try to get this bad boy up to the ultimate and not die before that happens. So, fingers crossed, things would be as easy as they're going to be for the next video. But yeah, yeah, gear is going to play a much bigger part in the next video. The devotions, the abilities, um, all the points are basically locked in. It's just about the distribution of them now. Uh, but really, as long as you have as many points as possible into Vyra's Might, into Blitz, and into Blade Arc, you're going to be doing enough damage that stuff should still basically disintegrate in elite or die fast enough that you don't have to worry about your health too hard once we move into ultimate that's all going to change obviously because resistances come into play enemies are doing a lot more damage and we have to have a lot more ways to counteract that so we'll need to start Hard dumping points into the defensive abilities, get gear that is maxing out those resistances, being as good as possible. And, uh, yeah, regular level 40 or 50 gear is not going to cut it in the next video. So, once we get there, I'll talk a lot more about the gear, all the good stuff jumping up, and, uh, 
yeah, we'll just take it one little baby step at a time. But that's it for this video, everybody. Closing remarks, I'm still enjoying the hardcore playthrough with this build. We're kind of blitzing through Elite at the moment. I don't want to get myself into a whole bunch of situations with angry bosses that can randomly kill me, but for the time being, is pretty good. Uh, build videos will probably be back soon, but I'd also like to try to get another lore video out after the hardcore run is done because I have been missing my sentinel and doing silly voices when we do the lore notes. So that's coming up. I'm also playing a lot of Diablo 3 right now because D4 is coming up and I kind of want to prove to myself that I can hang with the uh, higher echelons of Diablo 3 at the moment. So be on the lookout on the channel for a couple of those videos. I think once we start getting into the Ancients and the uh, Greater Rifts um, of, you know, the Torment 10 and onward difficulty, I'll start posting those. But we're still grinding up, trying to get stuff that works for me in that game, reliving all the glory that brought me out. Diablo 3 is what got me into Grim Dawn, so ultimately, I think it deserves a little bit of a slot before Diablo 4 comes out. And that'll definitely have a big place on this channel because D4 looks fantastic. And I'm looking into getting a new rig just to play it at the best settings possible. So, anyway, that's kind of an update on where my head is at with all this stuff. But that is going to do it for me. Thank you so much for hanging out, everybody. I will catch you next time. Peace out.